Welcome to Go Behind the Ballot, a podcast where two Texas moms go on an educational quest to demystify Texas politics. Join me, Nicole Abshire, and my co-host, Claire Campos O'Neill, as we deep dive into the most burning issues, hear stories from candidates, and offer hope in these challenging political times. Let's saddle up and go behind the ballot. Hi, everyone. It's Claire and Nicole here from Go Behind the Ballot. So today we are talking about this really interesting CNN special that we both saw recently called Deep in the Pockets of Texas. We wanted to share our reactions to that show and encourage all of y'all to go watch this show after you listen to this podcast, or maybe you've already seen the show and you want to hear what we have to say about it. So um, this came out a few, this came out in July. Uh, I saw it on YouTube TV through that subscription. And I had known a little bit about what was happening behind the scenes with money in Texas politics, but I did not know how deep this ran. So even if you might have a little bit of knowledge, I really encourage you to watch it because you're going to learn something mind blowing. What did you think of it, Nicole? Because you, I think um, you saw it first and you were like, have you seen this? I was like, I'm going to. <laughs> I got it on my queue for later. Yeah. It's all set to watch. Okay. Yeah. And my route to it was pretty roundabout. Um, and before we get into what we thought of it, I do want to help guide people to find it because it actually isn't as easy as I thought it would be. So what happened for me is that I was talking actually to a fellow mom and she asked if I had seen it and she sent a link via text. Mm -hmm. But what it turns out is that it was a link to a pretty in-depth article on CNN.com, but not the actual full-length documentary. And full-length in this case, I think it's what, about 40, 45 minutes, minutes, something Mm -hmm. like that. Um, But it was a pretty good article and it had video clips within it. That kind of gave you a taste of the larger documentary, but not the whole thing. Sorry, question. The article. How did yeah. this come up between you and your mom friend? Well, we were talking about a separate project, actually. We both have gender nonconforming kiddos. And uh, she wondered if I if I knew about this particular subject. Ah, uh, right. If I understood how we got this far to the right. In Why Texas. we're even talking about this, like at the Texas Capitol. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that's why I was talking to her and that's who turned me on to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so so at that point, I had only read the article, which again, really in depth, has a lot of good information. But when I went to watch the actual full length, I couldn't find it. And then I found this link that said it would be available again at some point but it was a little confusing. Then for me, the way that I stumbled across it is that I subscribed to Christopher Tackett's YouTube channel. Oh, okay. And he posted it. So I was able to watch it via his channel on YouTube. And I bring that up because if someone else is struggling to find it, this is a way to find it. But I will say it's multi-step. You would need to find Christopher Tackett on YouTube the correct Christopher Tackett, (laughs) and then of the videos he's posted, you can find it there. Yes. That makes sense. So I'm going to put that on our social media, by the way. Yeah. I, before you even mentioned Chris Tackett to me, I've been following him on Facebook. I actually saw Chris Tackett speak at an event here in Austin. I think it was like some Democrat group. I forget. But he was talking about money and politics, uh, dark money and politics. And I was just curious. I was like, oh, I'll just go. Like, I have a free afternoon. And he described how – well, I'll share this with you all because I ran for office. When you run for office, you have to submit your uh, campaign finance reports to the Texas Ethics Commission. So any money you receive, you have to disclose to the public. Well, he talked about how he would pull these reports and he would see how the money was being donated to candidates. And he found that these two billionaires were funding so many of these Republican campaigns. And he took that information and put it into these really easy to understand um, graphs, pie charts. pie charts. Yeah. And when you see it that way, you're like, what? You're telling me that, you know, ex candidate raised $3 million from like 10 people 
And candidate number two raised $5,000 from 100 people. I mean, you could just see the disparity in the numbers. So he, so that's how I got to know him. This was maybe like five years ago. So I'm following him on Facebook. He's like, oh, this, doc- this documentary's out. Check it out. I didn't realize he was featured in it in the beginning, which was really exciting. And I also had a hard time finding it. But I have YouTube TV, so I was able to record it and watch it. But I'm glad it's on YouTube and it's easier for the public to get it because you got to watch it. It's awesome. Okay, but I but I will say clear. I do. It is. I, I feel like easy with air quotes. It's yeah. <laughs> to me. It's not as easy to find as it ought to be. Mm-hmm. Um. So it is a two step process. And again, that's why I want to post it on our social media so that yes. when you're looking for Christopher Tackett on YouTube, it will you'll know which one. Mm-hmm. And then also just a screenshot of of the title of the video, which is deep in the pockets of Texas. I know that's not that complicated to remember, but just, you know, if we can help guide people to the right spot Mm -hmm. um, quickly, let's do it. So should we get into the episode? (sighs) Let's do it. So this episode opens with um, this investigative reporter from CNN trying to figure out how Texas has shifted so far right politically. They say that a lot of the legislation that Texas is this incubator for political legislation, and a lot of what happens in Texas filters out to the rest of the country. And for those of you following what's happening in Texas, it is pretty extreme, even for some Republicans. And this reporter was positing this question: How is this the case? Why have we moved so far to the right? Um, I keep thinking about this word. I talk about it with you a lot, Nicole, the Overton window. I think that's what it's called and how this is sort of the window of what is uh, in the public mind as um, accessible, as feasible, I guess. And and it feels like we're just shifting like more and more conservative, whereas – you know, like I, I'll take a step back. I was at the Texas Capitol and they were talking about public education and these parents were saying that we shouldn't be teaching kids social emotional learning. And it's like, whoa, really? Like that seems talking about ex- feelings suddenly. Yeah. What should we talk about? Off the feelings? table. Like, ah. So anyway, uh, this reporter is trying to figure out what's happening. And it all points back to these two billionaires, Tim Dunn and Ferris Wilkes. Ferris and his brother, but really Ferris, how they have been funneling money into elections. They do it as individual donors because – I'll take one more step back. And it, there's 10 states in the nation where there is no limit on the amount of money that can be received in elections. You can give, like when I was running for office, you could have given me a million dollars, $5 million. I could have taken all of it. Some states do have caps. I don't know, $10,000. I'm not sure what they are, but they do have limits. In Texas, there are no limits. So individuals can give you whatever. They can do that. And they can give money to PACs, political action committees. And then the PAC can give that money to the candidate. And that's how they sort of, screen themselves from their personal name. So anyway, they deep dig deep into this and and show how these candidates are receiving this money. And when they receive this money, they're also sort of on, on a tight leash Beholden. To, yeah. mm-hmm, to enforce the policies that these two billionaires really want to see rolled out in the state and ultimately the nation and probably ultimately the world. I mean, they seem like they're reaching for the stars. So yes. what else? Yes. What else happened? Well, I think it's important to to really dig into that whole beholden to them portion of all this, um, because one candidate that they spoke to in the documentary, in fact, Shelley Luther, right, who is, I think, from North Texas, maybe the Dallas area, or maybe closer East to Texas. Oklahoma, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it is North Texas. Um, so she uh, is funded was funded, pardon me, she actually didn't win her primary, but funded by Tim Dunn and Ferris Wilkes. And the way that she characterized it is not that she has to do what they say, but that she was vetted by them, where she went and actually spoke in person to them and told them what she believes in. And that the the process was about making sure that they were aligned Mm -hmm. and that she wouldn't feel that she had to do what they say. She just has to do what she said she would do, which right. is a really interesting way of putting it. Um, but she is clearly super duper conservative and in line with their values, mm-hmm. which are very mm-hmm. uh, Christian centered. They are they want to 
see what they would call a return, right, to Christianity at the center of our government, in the center mm-hmm. of everyone's lives. Um, and so I think if you can make a case that that is also the way that you would govern in a way that they like, they would support your candidacy. Yes. And so, you know, it, it it's, I guess it's debatable how they would phrase it, right? I'm, I'm just mm-hmm. like, I'm curious if we could sit down with Tim Dunn and Ferris Wilkes, if we said, what is the relationship like when someone is elected who you have supported? And we have evidence and it's shown in the documentary that if you receive a lot of funding from them, that they will pick up the phone and give you a call and check in on how you're going to vote on something. On and particular so bills. Mm-hmm. It is a very, very intimate relationship, shall we right. say. Yes. And another way that they, I guess, uh, I mean, they say in the documentary that they control those who they have invested in <laughs> is they have another organization, a nonprofit, I forget the name of it, that comes out with a report card. And they say how- I think it's res- Citizens for res- Fiscal Responsibility. Okay. I know fiscal responsibility is in the name of the pack. Yes. It's and they give- very generic sounding, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. very, you know, kind oh, of run of legit. the mill uh-huh. name. <laughs> and they give these legislators a score from zero to 100, 100 being, I'm assuming, very much in line with uh, Wilkes slash Dunn's views. Uh, so that's one way that they keep them in line and they send these report cards out to voters. So if you can identify as a conservative person, I imagine that the higher these people score on the report card, the more likely you're going to think to yourself, oh, this is a candidate I want to support because I'm conservative, they're conservative. The thing people don't know is that they're kind of beyond where most people would say, I I am good with these policies to apply. And that's that's where there's a lot of uncomfortableness because it's so secret and not explicit where this is all coming from. This isn't the will of the people. This is the will of two men being imposed on us is, is what's happening in reality. Yeah. And they did a great job in the documentary, too, of demonstrating that by talking. Do you remember that the one voter who considers himself a conservative and they asked him if he had seen that report card that you just referenced? And he had. And he voted, I think, in line with that report card. At least that was Mm -hmm. what was intimated. But then they asked him, are you aware that the PAC that puts out that report card is funded by two billionaires? And he said, no, he had no idea. And then they asked how he felt about it. And he certainly seemed a little shaken, a little like, I didn't know. And that is information I wish I had known. Yes. So I think there's such a case to be made, right, for the transparency that is lacking in this this process. And And the other, that makes me think of something. The other thing that the interview highlights is interviews with Republican lawmakers who are not funded by Dunn and Wilkes and how they say, I am a conservative. You know, I put forward these bills to extremely limit abortion, whatever it is, but because I wasn't a hundred percent lockstep with them, they didn't want to fund my campaign. And it was probably for the best because I like that, um, I like that I'm the one that's in control of my decisions and I'm responsible to my constituents because they said, bottom line, a lot of this is about control and then being able to pick up the phone and say, this is the way you're going to vote on this bill. And they're not just saying that. It's not hearsay. I mean, they had interviews with a chief of staff who said, this is what happens in the office. I saw this happen. So um, a lot of the dots were connected, demonstrating that these two men are... They're like flying the plane. They're in charge of what's of what's going down. And that's concerning as someone who wants our democracy to be healthy and strong because that is not what's happening in reality. Well, it's the perfect time to quote Senator Kel Seliger. Is he Senator or Rep? I can't remember. I but think he, he was a sen- say Senator. Yeah. Senator um, Kel Seliger, who my family's from Midland. And so when I mentioned his name, my mom's ears perked up. She definitely knows who he is. Not not that they have a relationship, but just, you know, she's <laughs> very aware of him in West Texas. And 
he said that this is a Russian style oligarchy. I mean, he used those words um, that it is about control because he was aligned with Tim Dunn, who is from Midland or lives in Midland now, I guess not from Midland, but um, he was in line with him. It sounds like on many of his policies, but where they differed in particular, the two of them was in public education Mm -hmm. and that the feeling is that Kel Seliger is pro public education, but Tim Dunn is very much pro private Christian education. Right. And that is where they parted ways. And yes, no turning back. Yes. I'm glad you brought that up because I have heard that when it comes to public education in Texas, unique allies in this fight are some of the more liberal representatives in the urban areas and rural Republicans, because in those rural parts of Texas, the schools are the community and the backbone and where um, so much happens, so much happens. <laughs> so um, when when we're seeing this effort to privatize and sort of break that apart, they're the ones saying, wait a minute, we, we don't want to undermine public education. We need this um, this heart of our, our little town. So they're the ones that are really holding back the floodgates because it, if Dunn and um, <clears throat> Wilkes had their way, mm-mm. we would be getting our, our vouchers and they'd say, go f- find your own public, your own education for your child. <sighs> it's bad. It's really wild. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really wild. But it also, I will say, it's one of those things too that for me, it's like, oh, well, now things make sense. Yes, right. You know, when you have this sense of like, but public education right. is being undermined, undermined right now. And boy, we are moving really far to the right. How could this be happening? Why is this happening? You know, there's all these questions that feel, um, it feels all very true, but you can't mm-hmm. figure out what's real and what isn't. And this for sure makes it comprehensible or comprehensible. Um, mm-hmm. I understand why we are where we are. And it also makes it really clear what the stakes are and how we have to be aware of what's happening, share information, because it's similar to the conversation we had with Patty Everett, which is we if if we don't have transparent processes and information, we can't even debate the merits of the thing we need to talk about. In other words, right, like this isn't true democracy, what we're talking about here, what we're being presented with. This is two people. That's that's not a democracy. This is two people with a lot of money running the show. So we can't even talk about the policies that they're putting forth until we just, you know, separate that influence of money and their overreach in terms of the influence that they want to press onto Texas citizens. So I think that's the other thing that just drives me nuts is we can't have the actual debate and conversation because there's so yeah. much happening under the surface. Yeah, because we're not honest, which is why we love people like Chris Tackett, who just couldn't sit back. Like, well, I, I and the story he shared when he was here in Austin is that he was a school board representative. I think it was the superintendent of his district wanted to run for state representative. And he did all the things you do as a candidate. You call your circle of influence. You try to raise money that way. But I think the person he was running against was – bringing in all this money. And he was like, how is this happening? You know, like this is the superintendent. This this person is very embedded in the community. They know the teachers, the administrators, the families, the students. And yet this other candidate is just rolling in the dough. And that led him to figure out what was happening behind the scenes to pull back the curtain. And he learned what's happening, you know, with the money being poured in and poured in by Dunn and Wilkes. And we love that because when we can give him a spotlight, he can share it with people. And CNN gave him a spotlight, which is incredible because more people need to know what's happening. And I think right now, so many of us are just like sick of the fog and like the mucky water. Like, someone tell me, like, put put on the glasses. I want to see clearly. I'm so frustrated, you know? Yes. I have a lot of metaphors going on, but it's <laughs> frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> metaphors are good they're good <laughs> yes oh one thing I, that I thought about Nicole real quick because you said 
that Dunn and Wilkes are pushing this Christian agenda. And we should circle back to that. It's a Christian nationalist agenda, and it's nationalism in the sense that if you question the direction of your government, you are not patriotic. To be honest about our history is not patriotic. It's a very narrow definition of what it means to be a good citizen, and Christianity is also incredibly narrow. Um, very a very literal interpretation of the Bible. Um, they really subscribe to this belief called dominionism, that man was mandated to have dominion over the earth and these seven pillars. And they base Sometimes this off called of- seven mountains. Yeah, off of this like one or two verses in Genesis. And I'm like, excuse me, did you read the whole Bible? Like the message is to love your neighbor and to love God and love yourself. Like this is not loving whatsoever. You are pulling things way out of context, but- here we are. This is what they do, and we're going and we're like living in their world. I don't like it. Mm, well, because it is all it's it's about control. And and yeah. what's interesting too is that if you, well, Christopher Tackett also on his YouTube channel has a great small compilation of the Seven Mountains philosophy and kind of the overview, and um, they very unapologetically use the word control. Mm-hmm. And it, and it is about control, and um, that is really, well, it's really frightening. Uh, and uh, I will also say, if you watch that Seven Mountains video, a big proponent of it is Rafael Cruz. Oh yes, did he was not in the know special. that was Ted Cruz's dad. Yes, yes. Oh my goodness, right? I'm glad you brought that up. Yes, I forgot that Ted Cruz's dad was also in the CNN documentary. And uh, he's our senator. And anytime something horrible happens in the news, you know, you can call your senator and be like, can you please push common sense gun reform or expand Medicaid? Whatever it is, it feels like it falls on deaf ears and it I mean, it's like it does because is he bold into me and you? No, no, no. He gets all this money from those two billionaires. And and his foundation is based in this theology. So he has no motivation, really. Like he feels that like he's doing the work he's supposed to be doing. So why would he listen to us? Right. He shouldn't be an elected uh, uh, representative. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> to be blunt. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, this is a tough conversation, right? Because I know that you and I want to be really mindful of when we kind of slip into partisanship and and trying to be careful about that. Not ever being dishonest, but really trying to stay focused on democracy, right? Mm-hmm. And so once again, I feel like we're we're bringing up what I know is the most concerning to me, which is that this isn't democracy, right? Right. We can debate conservatism or let's say republicanism versus, you know, the Democratic Party. We can have those conversations about their platforms, but we can't have that honest conversation if the show is being run by a very few, very wealthy people Mm -hmm. with very specific agendas that are exclusive, And that's the thing. Their agendas are incredibly exclusive. They are designed to exclude. If you don't fit, dot, 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 and there's a very clear set of the things that you need to be and the things that you need to do to be included in the group, then you are truly excluded in some really dangerous and harmful ways, right? They write legislation that is harmful, they mm-hmm. use rhetoric that is harmful. They, you know, gin up their base in ways that are dangerous and harmful. So, you know, it's like I'm really trying to be careful to not be overly partisan, but this yeah. actually isn't that. This is about yes, very few with a lot of money. Right. And it's calling out those leaders who are not uh, being accountable to their constituents. They're accountable to their donors And that is icky. And that's what I really don't like. Because if I'm going to go before the Public Education Committee and give my testimony, I want to believe that they do have open minds and open ears and they're willing to hear what I have to say, as well as the other person who might not believe what I believe. But if that's not the case, because they're going to vote the way Dunn and Wilkes wants them to vote so they get their A plus on the report card, you don't belong there. Yeah. Yeah. 
what's the point of even going to speak in that right is the it's, opposite it's, it's of political democracy. theater i hate to say it but yeah that's what it feels like is political theater yes and that's when people feel disempowered and like what's the point of voting oh it's really bad it all starts to crack and fall apart and it plays right into the cynicism and it's hard to deny how attractive that is because it does feel really overwhelming mm-hmm. yeah because we don't have billions of dollars no I mean, I don't, even, I don't want yeah. billions of dollars. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I really don't. I, I, I don't understand the point. But that's, you know, we don't need to have that conversation. <laughs> but um, no, I just want power to the people. I want. Yeah, exactly. I want yes. people to have a voice. Because mm-hmm. none of this works. It's, you yes. Know. Oh, and w- another, when you're talking about harm and the harm it causes, it made me think about, um this letter they mention in the CNN special that some higher up wrote in one of Dunn Ferris's groups, basically saying like we, or oh, it was a tweet, I think, like we need to slaughter the wolves. Do you remember this? Oh, right. Uh, right, right, right. It was. It was basically to- sort of like drumming up violence in the name of. I don't know, getting rid of those who are who are too soft or something. And 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 I okay, I'm like kind of watching this, whatever. The follow-up interview was with this family who had a daughter who transitioned um from male to female. And And that's they were the like, mom, by the way, who I was referencing oh, earlier. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh wow, that's great. Well, anyway, Rachel. the parents say this rhetoric reminds us of the Crusades, sort of this justification for, you know, religious war and religious battles because we have to fight this enemy. And I was like, oh, no, this is what's really scary is this this violent rhetoric that some people can take action on because that they feel called to by God or whatever it is. And that's why it's it's more than just like political squabbling. Like this could lead to serious um harm that's what worries me Absolutely. i'm sure that i'm sure that family oh n- n- believe me there there are things that i could say um yeah there's a lot of a dog whistle kind of references that i think some of us maybe don't necessarily understand and are still trying to kind of decode what those things mean but they have very real meanings to people Mm -hmm. and can easily be used to justify any means necessary to make that agenda happen right so it is it it is a reason to be frightened um Mm -hmm. because it, it does have it has very very real consequences and also right anytime that you other and dehumanize the other it just makes it that much easier and justifiable to harm the yes. other. Right. And again, like we've seen this. This isn't hyperbole. This isn't something that, oh, I mean, theoretically that could happen. This happens, right? Mm-hmm. It happens. It, it happened in Buffalo. It happened in El Paso. It happened at the Pulse nightclub. That happens. Mm. And it's all connected because I I think about these young men who have been committing these horrible acts of violence and how a lot of them are just they have a very similar uh profile I guess you know they they felt isolated they felt angry they felt disconnected from their community and what does that tie back to social emotional learning they didn't understand what was going on inside of them and how to communicate with those that they were in school with or in their home life and they couldn't um there was this testimony of the public education uh ah, committee that i went to and this woman i think i talked about this at one point she was the assistant superintendent for the santa fe school and she she said something like let like kids who are loved don't don't commit mass murders and it's so true and I don't know how you can ever find that self-love for yourself if you can't articulate your feelings. So it's, it all matters. And when they start to incite violence, take away SEL, 
it's like you're leaving us with a really sad, ugly world, and I'm not here for it. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> we want to live. We want our kids to live. Yes. And and I think of like- Not I just live, about like, thrive. Yes. I think about the campsite rule. Like, I want to leave this world better than I found it. And I don't think they're coming from that place. And, you know, they call themselves Christian. I grew up in a Christian household. I can say I'm, I'm a Christian. I call myself a Christian. But this is not, I don't, Jesus would be like, excuse me. Like, what are y'all doing over there? I mean, we I mean. could get into a whole discussion about that, <laughs> but maybe we don't want to talk about theology. But I mean, right? It's uh, it's not the Jesus I know, but mm -hmm. you know, I know we don't want to start yes. start going down that road. But it is a this hijacked is, version, that's for sure. It is, yes, and yeah. It's bottom line: um, two people heavily influencing the legislation that's happening at the Capitol and pushing through these laws. And even if their candidates don't win, they make this point towards the end, that they win anyway because they're moving the other candidates further to the right, further to their causes. And that it's that Overton window, like they're shifting it a little bit each day. And the bottom line is a lot of Texans aren't there, you know? We need a representative government that's more aligned with with what our values are. So, whoa, you should go see this. You're going to learn so much. It it and it's the not that long, in such a good way, but yeah. it is incredibly effective. Mm -hmm. And and straight to the point and and factual. Like let's let's be clear. It is. It's you know. There's a lot of pie charts that are shared. <laughs> I mean, they're definitely. Mm -hmm backing yes. up what they're saying with yes. evidence and data. And that's real information. As I said, you report this to the Texas Ethics Commission. If you do it incorrectly, you get fined, you get penalized. So the charts that they're showing, those are the finance reports that the candidates reported. So yeah, it's not like imaginary numbers. It's he's Chris Tackett was working with the real data and sh and just shedding light on it because a lot of people didn't know what was happening. Because who goes to the Texas Ethics Commission website? I only went there because I had to. It is not very user-friendly. Well, and we get back to the other thing. You wouldn't know to. You wouldn't think you needed to. All right. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just, once again, we're talking about shining light into dark places. And so when you said dark money earlier, I was kind of like going, oh, I wonder if we should stop and actually kind of define that. And I think here we are, right? That's what dark money means, where you don't really understand the source. Mm -hmm. And um, that can be hidden behind a pack. That can right. just be hidden because you haven't gone to look at who those donors are. Dark money just meaning it's in the shadows and it, it is unclear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we encourage you to watch this special and listen to our episode with Chris Tackett and let us know what you think. Because um, we let you, yeah, we have lots of thoughts. Feel free to disagree with us, but yeah, we're absolutely. interested. Absolutely. Yeah. But we want to be corrected too. Yeah. <laughs> like I could be wrong. I'm ready to change my opinion if new information is presented. That's, I want to grow. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Well, no. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> I was about to go off on a tangent. That is not, that is, it's not where we need to go. So yes, watch, let us know what you think. All right. Thanks everybody. We'll Thank talk to you, soon. you. Thank you, everybody, for joining me, Nicole Abshire, and my co-host, Claire Campos O'Neill, on Go Behind the Ballot. Hopefully, we've demystified some little portion of Texas politics, and we hope that you'll do more with us. Check out our website at www.gobehindtheballot.com, where you'll find links to all of our social media, and you will find our community. Let's join together and do more. We hope you'll let us know what is working, and we hope you'll join us next week. Thanks, everybody, and have a good one.